Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new Nike LeBron Next Generation. And in some ways they may actually be a better shoe for you than LeBron 20. In other ways, maybe not so much. I think it kind of comes down to what you need out of the shoe and kind of the unique characteristics of both of them. So let's get into them. Let's see if they may be the right fit for you. No pun intended, or I guess maybe some pun intended, but let's get into the video. Now the first thing I noticed about the next generation is that the uppers are quite different than the LeBron 20 in terms of materials. Now the midfoot and the entire forefoot is what Nike calls their engineered mesh. It's basically just a combination of textile and TPU threads going through it. It is actually surprisingly strong. It feels pretty containing for how light it is. It almost feels like ripstop, but just a little bit more substantial. But as you start moving through the uppers kind of into the tongue and into the lace, line and ankle collar. The tongue of the next generations is it's not padded like the LeBron 20s are, which is like super nice padded tongue free materials. This is a little bit thinner. It does have some vent holes in it. However, I do notice if you do use the back eyelet on the next generations as a runner's knot or even just use it in general, it does take a little bit of time to kind of sink into the shoe that the laces aren't going to bother your anterior ankle. And speaking of that ankle collar on the medial side or inside of the shoe, you do have a suede reinforcement that goes around the ankle collar. It does provide a little bit more stability to the shoe, not a ton, but you definitely do notice it when you lace it up. There is just a little bit more force there. And if you look on the inside of the shoe, I don't know where I put it, oh yeah, over here. Uh, there is actually Nike Sphere in the next generation as well as in the 20s. Now Nike Sphere, once again, let me get the microscope. Nike Sphere isn't all that crazy of a technology. It's more just good ergonomics. All it is is these little pieces of punched out foam with a lattice inside of them, which allows more airflow through those honey Comb. So when your foot starts sweating, producing more heat, it gets into those spheres and it's allowed to kind of transfer through them and out the shoe. It, it's nothing crazy technological. It's more of a high-tech theory more than high-tech materials. When we look at the back portion of the shoe, it is just a little bit more of a true mid-top, definitely a higher collar than the LeBron 20. The heel counter is a little bit higher. The ankle lace eyelets just go a little bit higher. The swoop here is a little bit higher. So all in all, just, just a little bit more bulk around the ankle in general, especially versus LeBron. 20. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. Well, I mean, the engineered mesh is very good for blunt containment. However, in terms of durability to abrasion, not so much as rips right through it. However, that suede durability guard, the Dremel doesn't even really bite through that. It just basically shines it up a little bit, which was kind of weird. So I'd say if you're not an extreme toe dragger on an outdoor court, I think it's fine because that mesh has such a low coefficient of friction that on a hardwood court, it's just gonna slide, plus you got the suede. So I'd say if you keep them indoors, they'll be okay. Outdoors though, get ready to start ripping them up. And so for containment, on the universal rating system, I'm gonna give them a four out of five. They would have been a five out of five, except if you wanna get the most maximum containment, you do wanna use the back eyelet and a runner's knot or just use the eyelet. And in that way, it is a little bit more uncomfortable. So if you didn't have to do that, I'd give them a five, but to get the maximum amount of containment, kinda of gotta augment a little bit. Now getting into the midsole teardown, I think this is where I spent the majority of my time today kinda of with these shoes, cause I was trying to figure out, is it the same foam as a LeBron 20? Is it just Phylon? Had to get the microscope out. I did find that under the microscope, it looks identical to the LeBron 20. Underfoot, it feels identical to LeBron 20. And just the palpation, it feels identical to LeBron 20. So I am pretty sure this is Cushlon underfoot. It's got the same kind of bigger zoom air unit in the heel. It also has the same zoom turbo unit in the forefoot. Biggest difference is instead of a bottom loaded carbon fiber shank, these have a top loaded plastic or TPU shank. And the interesting thing is if you look at the bounce height test on these, 36.5 centimeters in the heel, 42.5 centimeters in the forefoot. Now the interesting thing is on the LeBron 20 bounce height test, it got 39.5 centimeters in the heel and then the exact same 42.5 centimeters in the forefoot. Now the reason for that is that I kind of surmised is because in the next generation you have this plastic shank and sometimes it doesn't allow for as much elasticity when the ball comes, compresses the zoom area and pops. Whereas in the 20, all that's around it is foam. So it's allowed to compress and pop more. And that's really the only big difference in terms of the midsole. However, there are a couple big differences in terms of speed in them that have to do with other things in the shoe, which we'll get to in a second. Now, if you look at the jump height test on the next generations, yes, I brought the jump height test back just in a different format so I could isolate the shank a little bit better. I got 17 centimeters on the single leg jump height test. Now that does equal my very best previous performances. However, then the LeBron 20, I got up to 19 and a half centimeters on those. And speaking of all these new tests I've been doing and like all this new stuff behind me, if you do want a full tour of my new 
Studio. I do have that in the membership section. I will leave a link down below. If you are a channel member, it is uploaded now. And if you do want to join the membership, I'll leave a link down below and there's just the join button on the membership page. All right, back to shoes. And so for bounce and shock absorption on the universal rating system, for bounce, I'm giving them a four out of five. Yeah, they do have really good bounce on the bounce height test. But like I said, there are some other things about the shoe that make them just a little bit more difficult to get off the ground than the most elite shoes I've tested. However, for shock absorption, I am giving them a five out of five. That giant zoom air unit in the back and the zoom turbo unit in the forefoot, especially on a hardwood court, is just phenomenal. All right, but getting into the outsole tread of the next generations, it is a full length tread pattern with translucent rubber on every model, at least I've seen that's come out. Now the outsole tread pattern itself looks like a city street map from above. It's just a lot of haphazard lines going in different irregular angles and directions, which in theory is really great for grip in multiple different directions or when you're trying to catch grip just on one little part of the shoe or when you're in more awkward positions. However, what I found on the next generations were they were very easy to get from one step to the next. They had a lot more fluid footwork maybe than the LeBron 20 does. It's just really easy kind of transition step. However, they're not so good for the stop on a dime type footwork like the LeBron 20s as you're trying to make an ankle breaker move or just really trying to put the brakes on really quick. They just don't have that really sharp stop on a dime grip like the 20s do. I, I will say they were really nice for hezzy steps or dragging because they were just really easy to kind of pick back up traction when you're moving. Like I said, they are pretty fluid under there. And so looking at the next generation speed ratio, remember that's bounce in centimeters over weight of the shoe. These come in at a 2.78, which is really good. It's one of the best shoes I've ever tested. However, for speed on the universal rating system, I'm only going to give them a three. I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive. However, with the shape of the forefoot being a lot more hot dog, it's not really streamlined. They're not the easiest things to kind of bend and move. They're also not the easiest in the ankle collar to get to go either. Once you break them in, they are a little bit better, but it's not like the LeBron 20 where you got all these degrees of freedom in your ankle and your subtalar joint. They kind of have that really nice straight line speed. Whereas in the next generations, yeah, they have some good side to side speed and containment, but just in terms of the profile of the shoe, they're just not a very speedy shoe front to back. And on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I did this one three times and changed the Dremel bit because I didn't believe my results. However, not even a millimeter of damage on a two millimeter tread depth. The durometer is only 16.5 on these. However, this did not say EP version on these shoes. Um, whatever Nike put in this translucent rubber, it is darn durable. On an indoor court, I don't really see these going anywhere anytime fast. And that also kind of clues me in as to why the grip wasn't as crazy as some others, because the rubber just isn't as soft. It's not interacting with the court like some of the softer rubbers do. But if you want a shoe that's going to last on an indoor court, mm, this is pretty darn good. And so for durability on the URS, I mean, I got to give them a four out of five. I mean, yeah, I mean, the upper is kind of ripped right through it with a Dremel. And if you're dragging on hardwood, I really don't see the friction getting high enough to do with these. So I'd say on an indoor court, definitely a five out of five, but all in all, I'd say four out of five. And getting into the fit of the next generations, I found because the forefoot was a little more hot dog shaped, it didn't really taper at all. A narrow, medium, and wide width foot can just go true to size on these. The containment is fine, so and you're not gonna be slipping out of these anytime soon. I would say for somebody with heel pain or ball of foot pain, that Zoom Air is fantastic, should be doing fine on that. And so with that on the URS for comfort, I'm gonna give them a three out of five bottom of your foot, they are great. It's just like I said, the uppers do take a little bit of time to break in and they feel really stubby underfoot. Like it felt like my toes were pushing up against the shoe. They weren't, I mean, they were in the same place they always are, except the forefoot of these is so low that it almost feels like you're pushing into the shoe. You're not, it's just kind of the feeling of it. It takes a little bit of break in, but then it's okay. So three out of five. And then for support, I'm gonna give them a four out of five because the shank is still decent. Like I said, the Zoom Air units and it accepts an orthotic so well. So, you know, not all good not all bad. And in terms of the most important thing, playability, uh, I don't think these played as great as the LeBron 20s did. I will say if you're a bigger center or power forward, looking for a shoe that's not so super maximal, something a little, maybe a little bit easier to get up off the ground in, these are a nice pickup. I, I, they are stable enough. And like I said, they do roll from one shot to the next. So like a small forward, power forward, kind of drive into the hoop. These are really nice. I, I found kind of going up for layups was very easy in these once I put some energy into them. And once I broke the ankle collar in for sure. Um, I'm not so sure they're the greatest for really shifty point guard or shooting guard. They're trying to make really crazy ankle breaker moves or really stop on a dime trying to create space for yourself. I'm not so sure they're made for that. So I think anything kind of in and around the rim on these is a very good pickup. And for the profile of the shoe, I, I do think they move pretty decently. So remember, these are a quote unquote takedown version of the 20s. However, the price points I've been seeing are still $160. I mean, I paid more for these just to get them early. However, you know, that 
but that's still a pretty decent price tag for a shoe. And I think the build quality and the material quality does kind of live up to that price tag. So even though it is a takedown model of the LeBron 20, I think it is still a flagship level type shoe. So I, I'd love to start seeing what people think of them when they're playing. So I really would love to hear your opinions of them down below. You know, you think you're gonna give these a try, you sticking with the 20 or to go with something completely different? Let me know down below. And if you wanna see the older sibling to the next generations, the LeBron 20 itself, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next one.